Oh, now it's on. Oh, mine is now. Okay. There they are. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. It worked in spite of me. I Good don't afternoon. I'd like to call uh, the meeting of the Sturgis Public Library Board of Trustees to order. If, um, has everyone had the opportunity to review the minutes from the last meeting? Yes. yes. Are there any questions or concerns regarding the minutes of the last meeting? Move to approve. Thank you, Lance. Is I'll there second. a second? Kristen? It's been moved and approved. To, it's been moved and second to approve the minutes from the February 23rd meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed, thank you. We'll move on to bills and accounts. Are there questions regarding bills and accounts? Chris, I would ask in the future if it's possible to uh, have those sent out electronically before the meeting. Uh, if I did. I didn't did it not go through? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, it, okay. It's probably sitting. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's if it if uh, you close the computer too soon, it doesn't send. So it's probably sitting there in drafts. Um, yeah, and actually related to that, we were just just talking about um, uh, actually instead of you know Julie had always done things you know she would always create the financials like the day before the day of um, so that they were current and um, if you guys are okay with it, I would just as soon do it like up to the Friday before the meeting or even a week before that so that I can send everything out like a week week and a half ahead of time. If that works for you guys, I'd be um, fine with that. Sir. That way, I can send out all everything in one packet, all done. So, good, good, good. Um, well, let's take a minute to review the financials if you haven't had a chance, and obviously we haven't. I thought maybe it just didn't come to my computer. Mm, apparently, my computer didn't let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I am in the process of um i guess updating the uh, uh quicken software um i think when valerie left um she had quit putting all the numbers in so all of the quicken data is not up to date and so i've been slowly trying to fix all that stuff once that's done then um i'll be able to everything will kind of be in one report that comes out and it should uh, uh, hopefully be clear and and easier to read through. So that's, I don't know how much longer that's going to take me. I think I'm up through, I don't know, about May or June of, of last year. So we're getting there. So hopefully that will, will uh, start to look a little cleaner as well. Um, I did include a balance on the last page of the of the register is the the balances in in all of the um, accounts mm -hmm. where the money is is earmarked they're not all necessarily separate accounts but you can kind of see where we're sitting um, for pretty much everything that's very easy to read thanks yeah thank you oh I'm yeah I'm trying to uh, as, as as much for me as for you guys to, to kind of give me a, a, the ability to see um, what we've got out there so yeah I like that it refers back to the register too yeah the balances do well and the, yeah and that's I I'm trying to make it clean and straightforward so Good. so hopefully it'll it'll or if we can if we can get it so anyway are there any other questions or comments regarding bills and accounts if not, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thanks, Kelly. It's been moved and second to approve bills and accounts. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. We'll move into reports. Chris, the KPI. Okay, just a second. I'm, I'm being a secretary right now. Um, Okay, uh, all right, uh, let's see. Okay, um, Okay, the, um, you can look at the, the stats for everything. Um, curbside deliveries, home book deliveries are down a little bit from uh, last year's numbers, um, uh, which is kind of to be expected. Uh, computer help is actually going up. Uh, research and reference is going up quite a bit, mainly because um, we're, we're – uh, 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 we have a different way of, of collecting the data than we did before. And so uh, I've made it easier for, um, for the, whoever is at the desk to, to check off if they had a research or reference question. So I think those numbers are, are more accurate than they had been in the past. Because um, before you had to go into the computer and, and, and check off a little box or actually change the number and, and we would forget about it, especially if we were busy. So, so that's good, those numbers are up. Computer use is actually up um uh from last year uh, month over month is 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 going up uh as our meetings and uh, uh exam proctoring hasn't yet this year but it's still kind of early um youth program attendance uh i think is is up a little bit from where it had been we're starting to get more people showing up to the story times um than we have and so that's um that's promising adult programs um a down, they're down, but uh, I'm hoping that as the weather gets nicer and we start doing more summer activities, we can uh, start to bring some more people in, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then Libby, the online stuff is is uh, um, kind of hanging steady. Um, you can see that, you know, we have about 6,500 print items circulated and 5,000 uh, through overdrive, so that's becoming more and more uh, popular, and uh, um, which is good. Chris, is the meeting room reservation? Uh, the number in, in parentheses, parentheses is attendees. attendance. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's a little confusing the way it was written, um, but yeah, so we had 196. Um, well, 122 last month show up and. Uh, um, so yeah, those numbers are starting to, starting to bounce back, which is nice. Um, donations, uh, Francie's donation, um, um, is, uh, came in this month and then we're still sitting with 3,200 in Julie's art fund. Um, that hasn't changed. Um, and you can read the rest of the art exhibits. Right. Uh, uh, the meetings, um, uh, have been, uh, increasing quite a bit. Um, Donia, uh, the assistant director, is taking over Toddler Tuesdays right now. Um, when Katie left, that was one of her jobs. And so uh, Donia has started doing that, and she'll, she'll keep doing that um, uh, since that's one of the things she did uh, at her prior job was as a children's librarian. So she's excited about that. Um, and uh, the, the coding club, I think, has doubled in size from the first meeting, or almost doubled in size. I think she's got 10 or so in there now, I think eight or 10. So that's cool. Um, uh, um, we've had a ton of books coming in. Um, um, I, I showed up a couple Fridays ago. There are three boxes of books sitting outside the front door. Um, after I pulled those in, a guy pulled up and, and my sister's closet had five books or five boxes of books that were, well, five the first trip and then I think three the second trip. Oh, wow. Um, just every day we're getting a ton of books in. Um, a lot of them are unusable. 
a lot of paperbacks that, you know, the spines are all broken out. Um, a lot of them that are probably 40 to 50 years old and they're all stained and have odors. And so some of them we can use for book sale. Um, some of them we just have to get rid of. Uh, uh, and some there are uh, some that will go into circulation, I think. We're still in the process of, of figuring all that out. But um, So we have a ton of books that we're going to use at a book sale that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, we still have a ton of COVID-19 tests. Um, and the Black Hills Area Community Foundation came and got the remaining 20 or 25 gift cards that we hadn't given out yet for boosters and took them back to Rapid because they had a need for them. So, so that's over. Uh, but we did give, I think, 22 or 23 out um, uh, while we had those. Um, facility updates. Uh, uh, the 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 pipes freezing it's just going to happen when it gets super cold out um there's i don't think there's much that's going to be able to be done um we did get a new through wall uh that has a neoprene insulator that's supposed to help with cold air um they couldn't keep the 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 outside door to that wouldn't close all the way um so uh public works put some weight i don't know how they attached some weights to it to keep it shut Mm -hmm. um, which works great, except now if you don't push everything in hard enough because of the neoprene, some of the stuff gets stuck. So sometimes people will come in and say the book drops full. Uh, and it's actually not. It's just clogged. Right. So I haven't had a chance to get in there and muck with that to see if there's anything we can do. But at least that's good I mean, that it's fixed. Um, they had to, they put in a cove heater, but it couldn't keep up. Um so they put in a bigger cove heater, about a, another foot or two of extra coils on it, uh, hoping that that will help um, in the wintertime to keep things from freezing up. Um, uh, the community room kitchen vent has no cover on it. It actually it doesn't vent up or straight out of the building. It actually vents on the west side of the building which I think was done to because of the prevailing winds. Um, but it just, it just ends. There's no vent cover over it. So when the wind blows, you get, well, you get bugs. There's always dust in there. So we're, we're going to look into putting some sort of a vent over that that closes, like a dryer vent kind of thing. Um, and uh, uh, we fixed the bathroom toilet, although there's still a little bit of a sewer smell that we're trying to figure out what's wrong with that. But... We're getting there, um, but it does flush now, which is Ooh. really nice. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, I don't know, they pulled out of it. But anyway, um, uh, so that's good. And uh, they're replacing the lights. Any of the ballasts that are out um, are, are getting replaced with LED bulbs. They're doing that kind of when the weather's really bad and they can't work outside, they come in and do it. So they're about probably close to halfway done now. And uh, um, yeah, Dean, thanks for the rebate information. Uh, unfortunately, it's all all consumer, not business. Gotcha. But okay. but it, I looked into it to see if there was anything. I was kind of hoping, but well, if I, I should have yeah. done my homework and looked at it before I sent it to you. So well, so nah, it's you know because there were a couple of links and I I ex did some exploring. But anyway, so no rebates on that, but that's okay. Um, it'll be nice to have that that done. Um, so that's, oh, uh, um, and then I think I've got it on, I don't know if I have it on the new one or not. The, um, some of the linoleum by the circulation desk, um, where the chairs are, the two people sit, um, is coming up. Um, on one side it had been, there was a big patch put in already. I think that was a couple of years ago. The other side now is kind of ready for that. So I'm thinking, um, that maybe what we need to do along that center stretch is just rip all that linoleum up and put new down, um, which would be about, I'm guessing probably about a thousand bucks. It's uh, you know, under 300 square feet, probably 250 to 200 square feet that would need to be replaced. So um, I'll look into that and then let you guys know what I've come up with. Do but, we have any left over? <sighs> I haven't looked yet. Um, I I need to go upstairs and see if there's any tucked in there. I don't remember seeing any last time I was up there, but there could be. 
and I can check with with Rick and see because I know some of the extra stuff for the children's area they've got tucked away somewhere some of those extra tiles and, and stuff so it may be that we can we could just patch it although if it's coming up it's you know it's going to keep coming up right. yeah that was what, what was going through my head when you said that is what's underneath the it's concrete it's just glued to the concrete would it be more beneficial to pull it up stain the concrete and just get a rubber mat you know like the office type mat? um I, could be could be then you don't have to worry about matching the mullein from 19. Whatever. well right the the way it's set up though um there's a there's a clean seam between the back part and the front so i mean we could put down a you know a threshold and 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 i think it wouldn't be too it wouldn't look too weird um but yeah that would be another possibility i i guess i'd have to look and see what the what the floor looks like underneath it um but yeah yeah i'll write that down i do have one question on the book donations oh yeah um but do you get is it is it advertised that you guys take book donations um or is it just people people just do it the library so they bring books yeah i just didn't know if it would be any sort of benefit to you guys in time saving if you guys had something on the library's portion of a website or mm -hmm. any sort of direction saying we welcome donations if x y and z are met would it um, save you right. time? Uh, or is it not worth it? You're fine. You, you know, uh, well, I'm, I, I, you know, I guess I, I don't have a, a good answer. My my thought is, um, you know, we're we're happy to take stuff. Right. You and, don't want to deter people from um, right. And and if if we say, well, you know, it can't be this old. It can't be because sometimes I mean it. Uh, Right, like you the never first know what you're going to get. Of something. <laughs> true, true. Um, There's some books that uh, are somebody old went, "Oh, this is kind of old. I don't want to." But uh, um, so uh, uh, and yeah, the stuff that's <clears throat> falling apart, you know, uh, we'll take it. And, and if we can do something with it, great. I mean, sometimes we, we can use it for uh, programming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so um, yeah, I don't know if it would if it would deter too many or if people wouldn't know or wouldn't care it's hard to say just I guess I don't merely know. suggestions yeah. for efficiency type stuff is all. yeah and i have yeah. a question too because i had someone ask me sure. they have like their organizations in charge of one of the little libraries whatever what are they called my little library yeah. oh yeah, yeah, library. yeah, yeah. and they had asked did the library would they if they have extra books would they donate a few to put into these i said i don't know the answer to that yeah Okay, yeah. so just have them come in. Ask. Yeah, have them come in, and we've got because we've got you know all the stuff that's up for the book sale. Okay, um, we do like right now. We uh, uh, Aspen Hills just came in a couple weeks ago and brought in some of their books and took some of ours. We just kind of did a Exchange. swap so that they've got got Perfect. some stuff. And, Thank you. And uh, yeah, yeah. So we're yeah, that'd be fine. I think. Yeah. Yeah, the more people that read, the better. So um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, okay, yeah, so the linoleum, and I think that's about it. Let me look at my... Chris, I wanted to ask you if there's an update on the doors. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> update on the okay. doors. Um, we can't lock our doors. They're on a timer. If we need to lock them for any reason, like we have a staff meeting, we can't lock them for the staff meeting that we have because I was told we can't. So... Um, Lisa's looking into whether or not I can get access to the computer system that locks the doors so that I could lock the doors if need be. I mean, there were times um, when, you know, snowstorm, library shuts down, Julie couldn't go home because there was no way to lock the doors. And so that's like, well, okay. Um, the only thing we can do um, right now is... Um, we do have one set of metal pieces that go over the the hinge at the top that kind of keeps you from being able to open it. So if we bought a second set of those, we could put those on the Sherman Street doors and at least. It's like a physical, yeah, like a barrier that. Yeah, it's just a wedge that fits up yeah. there so that so it can't 
the hinge doesn't when, open. Yeah, it can't open when you try to pull on it. Um, uh, but we're still looking at, at fixing that. We also have kind of an ongoing issue with the one front door that is always locked um, that the door guy came and told me well, it works fine. And I said, well, this, no, pull on it. Well, yeah, yeah, it's locked. Can we unlock it? Well, yeah. Okay, show me how it unlocks. Well, you can't get a key in there because something's broken off in the lock. And and he seemed to think that it was a problem with the magnets, not a problem with the locking mechanism. And so that was never resolved. So that's... So he was there to fix it, but it didn't get fixed? No, there was... No, he he, he, he told us that... And actually was... <laughs> and I was in the back when he showed up, but he was being, you know, very dismissive to the other librarians that were there until I showed up. And then it was a little bit different, you know, because I guess because I was a guy and and he could talk to me about things. Although he he actually was was not very pleasant to me either, but at least <laughs> at least I asked him a couple of questions that that made it seem like I know what I was talking about and he kind of appreciated that. But anyway, so it's just an ongoing thing with the doors. I I'm hoping one of these days it'll get taken care of, but thank you for Then I won't have anything to complain about, so thanks for keeping Mixed bag. keeping us updated on it. We're still working on it. Great. We're still working on it. Um and I think that's about it for facilities. Okay. So, and building status you've covered with facilities. Yep. Looks like. Yes. And COVID-19, we're up to the Smithsonian Crossroads update. That, um, uh, we have a couple of ideas for some programming. Uh, one of them was, was Lisa's idea since the city owns so much of downtown. Uh, I think we're going to try to do a walking tour of downtown and get into some places that people have been interested in getting into for years and have never been able to. Mm. So that might be a kind of a nice thing to do and a couple of different ways to do that. Um, maybe have people stationed at each place that we're going into to talk about it and kind of run, uh, run groups through um, or have like one person take a group into all these places and talk about stuff. So uh, a couple of possibilities for that, but I think that might be a, a, a popular thing. Um, we're looking at six events, Max. Um, uh, we're having a, a Chamber of Commerce mixer during the event um, uh, in the library, and that's already on the books. And Veronica was interested in something else maybe that we can do with the chamber. Um, I was thinking maybe some sort of a kind of a discussion with the uh, Economic Development Council, since this is about the changes in rural uh, uh, communities. Uh, so maybe they would be interested in, in <clears throat> kind of helping out with some sort of discussion that way. Uh, still thinking about bringing in an author that could talk about things uh, and try to have some sort of a music event. And, and okay. uh, so some ideas. Um, we'll have a meeting in, in May uh, with all the, the state sites to talk about some other ideas. Um, we also, one of the other things that I think we'll, we'll try to do um, um, is, is uh, uh, have a, like a booth set up where people can do um, little oral histories. Um, so basically they would just walk up and, you know, record. tap on the computer to record and talk about their childhood or something, or, or we might need to, we might need to have somebody running it that could, you know, start and stop and maybe ask a couple questions. Um, uh, we're going to try that actually during the birthday party um, in April. Uh, it kind of, it'll be a good kind of first run to see how it works and if we have people showing up. And so um, that's another thing that we'll, we'll try doing. Um, okay. Yeah. Programming. Programming. Exciting things? Um, well, we we had some exciting things that nobody showed up for, unfortunately. Um, oh. Last Saturday, we had um, uh, uh, an author, um, uh, Bruce Junick, Bruce. came in and talked about his travels and how stuff he's learned on his travels are incorporated into this new book series that he's writing. And a couple members of his family were there, and that was all. Hmm. Um, but then we had a, a Black Hills She Rose um, event later on in the day, and that had about, I think, 15 or 20 people show up. And oh, Sierra said that was a, a, an outstanding program. So um, uh, 
so we're starting to pick things up. It, and, you know, you never know if people are going to show up or not. And you just have to keep, you know, plugging away. Trying to find a good time to do it is, is the tricky thing. Because Saturdays just turn out to be a really horrible day um, for doing events. Um, so, so finding other times. I'm going to start um, probably in May, I think, is when it's going to start. I'm going to try a, a monthly series called Music Speaks. And so um, uh, it'll be talking about just stuff about music, um, not necessarily just me, but I have um, a series of three um, kind of talks about, um, about funk, actually, and, and how it developed in the 60s and how it evolved in the 70s and then what happened to it, um, you know, basically with the rise of punk and how all that changed everything um and so that'll be like may june july do those um, um i also have a talk on um how music affects our brain just the the uh, uh, uh um, kind of neurological and and physiological effects of music on the brain and sound on the brain and what it what it actually does to us um, um that i could do um and then find some area people that want to maybe talk about other things. So it could cover a wide range. I might try to uh, uh, link it with like the Black Hills Symphony Orchestra concerts. So I could do a kind of a pre-concert talk before the concert on, you know, so like on, I'm going to try them on Thursdays. I think it's going to be like the third, second or third Thursday of the month. And then you could do a talk and then Saturday would be the concert. So people could have a little, uh, a little insight going into the concert about what they're going to hear and, so something like that. So we're going to try that. Um, uh, this summer, uh, uh, we're going to try to do some more outdoor stuff, maybe some, uh, some biking, some hiking. Uh, Sierra would like to do an intro to backpacking. She tried to get a grant for it, I think, last year, and it didn't go through. But I think we're going to try to find that again for maybe not this summer, but next summer. Um, and we were talking this morning about maybe doing some rural programming. So do something in Union Center. Or maybe try to do something with faith, the librarian faith, and 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 uh, share resources or something. So so doing stuff outside of Sturgis, since we have a lot of a lot of area to cover, I think it would be uh, I think it would be good to to get out of town. Basically, I think so. We're looking into into what we could do for that. So that's kind of what's going on with programming right now. All right, yeah. you just returned from a conference. Do you want to give us a brief summary and I can. the highlights? I can. I can find it. Um, yeah, the, the um, Public Library Association um, biannual conference, um, it had been... Uh, the last time they had it, it was it was virtual, but this time they went back to to uh, face to face, and um, a lot of great um, sessions that I went to, um, and just some some brief um, some brief things. Uh, I won't cover everything that I did, but um, uh, uh, a lot of the the uh, 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 sessions were kind of geared towards bigger libraries. So, you know, the presenter would start off by saying, well, you know, I'm the, the CEO of our library system, which has, you know, 37 branches and 800 staff, and, and this is what we're doing. Well, okay, is that something that I can do in Sturgis? And some of it I think we can, some of it not necessarily. Um, I went to a couple of things trying to get, you know, talking about teens and trying to get teens involved again. Um, one of the things that, that Denver is having success with is a teen advisory board. Um, and, and basically empowering the teens to come up with programming and ideas that are interested, that they're interested in. And then we go, oh, okay, this is what you want. Well, yeah, let's do that. So, um, uh, trying to, to find out what, what they're interested in having them also take ownership because some of the, some of the program that they do, the teens themselves that have been in the program for a while, put the stuff together and actually do it. So uh, it's more peer based rather than I'm an old guy. Listen to what I have to say because it's cool. Cause, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, um, but anyway, so so some of that. Um, um, also, there was a, a, a session that was 
kind of interesting about um, empowering underrepresented entrepreneurs? What can the library do to help build business in a town? Um, and basically, it comes down to having resources that uh, a new business owner could use as far as printing, faxing, computer use, um, but then also um, maybe setting up a, a mentor program where somebody in the community that was established could offer a seminar to people that want to get started um, or work with them kind of one-on-one -on -one and, and give them a little bit of help if they needed it. Um, and the, the library would facilitate that. I don't know what the Economic Development Corporation does in town, um, whether they're doing stuff like that already or whether we could partner with them, but that um, might be something that we can look into doing. Um, I did go to uh, um, a couple of sessions on on library boards, and and just mainly because since I'm kind of new to this, I I uh, uh, was interested. And 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 there are some ideas about about things. One of the things that 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 I think we need to do. I don't have it with me right now, but thinking about um, you know when people's terms are up. Um, one of the things they talked about was was having basically having a reserve of people that would be interested in serving on a library board so that when openings happen that you've got a pool that you can you know talk to instead of kind of scrambling to find somebody that would want to do it um, uh, so that's something that maybe um, you guys can think about maybe some people you know that that would be interested in the future uh, in serving on a board and and just start to put together things like that um, you know kind of finding everybody's strengths and then giving them jobs to do based on those strengths. So um, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and then also uh, what to do with with um, problem board members, which of course we don't have, but they they did give some 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 kind of horror stories about, you know, those like those people that are on the board that are like, you know, they've been on a board for 40 years and and anytime you want to do something, well, you know, this is the way we used to do it. And and what you do with people like that. Again, not I haven't heard that from you guys, so that's good. But anyway, um, um, uh, um, a book subscription box, which is um, I don't know if you guys know about subscription boxes, but basically um, you get something like you tell a, a, a company what you're interested in and then every month or every couple of months they send you a box that's filled with stuff related to what you're interested in for a cost but this is um some libraries are starting to do something like that especially with teens so the teens fill out they've got say we we can do eight of these boxes every three months or something and so they the first eight people that that respond will get this box and the students fill out basically what their interests are, what they like, what they don't like. And then the librarians would find a book that, yeah, that would fit the, and the idea is to get, is to improve literacy. So you, and, and they, you know, over time you would find what books they're interested in. And then that gives them something, oh, look, here's something that I can read. Um, uh, some of the libraries do it with, with, um, old, uh, you know, stuff that they've weeded in the collection. Um, other libraries find grant money and, uh, um, uh, to buy books. Um, but then the, so the size of the box would be based on what kind of money you had, what you had in the collection and, and, uh, um, maybe a possibility. Um, uh, I think it would depend on grant, but, um, um, grant money for that. Um, uh, I found out that there are some some librarians that are really really into data collection, like really into data collection. Don't you teachers around here? Yeah, well, and my wife's a little bit that way too. She likes data, um, but I mean, these are like one of the people that presented has a PhD in computational computational biology, oh my. and decided that she wanted to collect data for a library instead of what she's doing. Anyway, some, some great uses of data and, and, and some examples of, of ways that um, basically it was about how do you get data to stakeholders in a way that they can use it. Yeah. And uh, so 
um, I'll start. I'll start embracing the term pivot table and see if I can uh, start presenting material to you guys in in graphs and charts and things other than just numbers. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, but anyway, um, I did. I went to a kind of an interesting. Well, yeah, it was interesting. A mystery authors panel. There were um, uh, Meg Gardner. Catherine Miles, Daniel Nee, Stacey Willingham, and Robin Paguero. Um, I think three of them are have just released their debut novels. A couple of them have some out, and they were talking about their new books. and And, and it was kind of a nice nice change from you know oh, I have to learn all this stuff to hearing people talk about you know why they wrote what they wrote, which was pretty cool. Um, uh, there was a little session on how to throw a murder mystery party. Um, in the library, which may be something that we could try um, uh, uh, as a fundraiser, uh, perhaps. Um, the library's role in equitable college prep for teens, another teen thing, you know, just talking about resources that are out there that you can use to help uh, teens who are, are especially, say, first-generation college who don't quite know what they need, how they need to navigate. Um, uh, and so making sure that we have materials, mainly online, but also some physical things. Um, and I know, Don, you got rid of some of our old uh, college books that were, you know, 10 or 20 years old and have uh, put in, um, and she, she got a couple of new things. So um, we're already starting to do that, but there's more we can do. Um, uh, Library of Things, there was a, 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 some libraries in Kentucky were doing a, um, working with the University of Kentucky, doing research on radon in homes. And, and radon, which I didn't know this, was the second leading cause of lung cancer. In a home where you smoke and have radon, your chances of getting cancer are, I think they said, 20 times higher than just one or the other. So they're trying to figure out ways to, to, to deal with that. And, and what the libraries were doing were trying to collect data. They got, each library got uh, a bunch of electronic radon detectors that people could check out and use. And then part of that, if they would take part in the study, could get up to, well, could get 30% of their abatement costs covered by this grant that the university and the state of Kentucky had. Um, yeah, which uh, up to a certain level. The, the problem in these rural areas that they had is that they don't have anybody that does radon abatement because you have to be licensed. Um, and, and so it was working with these companies in Louisville and, um, and uh, uh, Knoxville, I think, were the two big places that, that had companies, getting them out to rural areas so that they could say, we're going to be here, you know, twice a year to do this. And anyway, all that working together. But, but what I pulled out of it was, you know, maybe we should have a couple of radon detectors. Mm -hmm. Under 150 bucks, you check it out for a week, you get the stats. Um, and since it's telling you what's going on in real time, it's not like the charcoal test where you have to send it off and get it, and get it uh, taken care of. And so if we had them that people could check out, then, you know, that might be a good thing. And then kind of related to that, on the flight home, I was thinking, well, if we're doing that, why can't we get the, uh, um, the little computers you plug into your car when, they're, when it's not working to read the codes? So, um, uh, so, so I think I'll, you know, that's probably something we'll, we'll start doing. Library of Things is interesting, and I think for another time, but <clears throat> when I was living in France, I was a member of a ludotech, which is connected to the library. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I mean, I, I've always wondered why we don't have something like that and where I've lived. Yeah. Um, it's basically you, you check out toys and households right. and costumes and right. you pay a flat membership fee. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. that meant I didn't have to buy a case. And like, like, I mean, it was, right. and granted the logistics of it, but like the idea of library of things, right. puzzles and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, it. and it's well, and it's it's I think something that I've I'm interested in in I increasing. I mean, the, you know, there are some libraries that they have. Well, if they have a makerspace room, they'll have you know sewing machines. They'll have. Mm -hmm. uh, I know um, uh, Sierra would like us to get a cricket, so you can cut out you know. I wish I had and all that, that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, <laughs> but um, so so I think we're going to be kind of making a push forward to that. Um, uh, 
uh, digital literacy with older patrons was another thing I went to, uh, how to teach them how to use their stuff. Um, uh, also a programming for aging adults, which happens to be people over 50. Oh, thanks. Or in the category of aging adults. <laughs> yeah, I was a little depressed to hear that too. But, uh, you know, um, but it's the same thing with, with the teens is, is have, you know, what do you guys want for programming? What do they want? And then we see what we can do. So um, to, to kind of work with that, and this kind of goes back to programming, I think what I'm going to try um, is, and I need to talk to Lisa about it, is, is getting, if the city has a, 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 a citywide email listing, if we can send out like real brief survey monkey surveys um, about what kind of programming people are interested in doing. Um, and then to, to sweeten the pot, maybe have a couple of uh, like $20 gift cards that you can enter to win. So that, you know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, even 100 bucks is probably worth it to get some data that we can use to find out what people want for programming. So um, I think we're going to we're going to see about that and get that going. Um, um, and then if sometime when we have more time, I can tell you a story about. Um, I don't know if you guys know Cal Penn. He's a he's an actor. He was he was Kumar in the Harold and Kumar movies. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on House for a while. Uh, anyway, Penn and Teller. Hmm? Uh, no, that's a different Penn. Oh, okay. uh, this uh, he this guy's a, an Asian American actor and uh, author. He wrote a memoir, but he 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 did the closing session and and he took a break from his acting career to work for um, the Obama White House as a youth and Asian American and arts uh, liaison. Basically, that's what he did. And and he told this great story about how that job kind of came about. And uh, um, it's kind of kind of interesting anyway. But um, uh, um, oh, and then the, the other thing, and I'll have to share this with you guys. I'll send out the information I got um, message dissemination during a crisis. And it was given by the the uh, Columbus, Ohio, public librarian who's in charge of their uh, basically community engagement. So this guy has a team of nine staff and they just deal with dealing with the public. Um, and they have this big thick book on what to do for any possible crisis. And the example he gave was in when there was a shooting in one of their libraries. And because they have this thing set up, the shooting happened at, at three o'clock because it was the downtown branch. Cops were there. Well, they have security. Security subdued the guy. Cops were there within 90 seconds. Um, by 10 after three, he and his staff were notified and sent out a message to all the librarians in the system saying there had been an incident. By like 3.20, they had more information out. By 3.30, they had a press release. By 3.45, they had... They did, had a little press conference. I mean, and he showed how basic you you have all this stuff ready to go so that anytime you have any kind of an event, mm -hmm. you can get the word out there, you know, and you can be honest with people and, and, you know, getting information out quickly really solves a lot of PR issues that may happen. Um, and it was not that we have, you know, have a real need for stuff mm -hmm. like that here, but that whole process that he had was really pretty... Uh, um, uh, pretty slick. And so I was going to talk to Christina about what the city has as far as stuff and, sure. and how we can integrate with that. So anyway, that was, that was it. Has some great food. Um, um, if you ever see a restaurant called Lardo, <laughs> go. Cause it, oh. thank you, Chris. There you go. We okay. Have a lot to cover. So we're yes. going to kind of move on. If there is no further reports, can we hear about the hundredth birthday party? Yes. I gave you all a handout. Okay. And this is been on, on the website? I believe so. Okay. And uh, um, yes, so uh, the week of April 3rd through 9th, we're celebrating the birthday. And you can see uh, what's going on. Uh, the 7th, which is the, the main day, we'll have a cake and refreshments all day long. Um, we're hoping to get rid of our a lot of our extra books because we're having a fill a bag for two bucks sale. Um, and uh, we'll have a bunch of hundreds around the library that you can try to go find. And anyway, all sorts of stuff going on that week. So Great. I hope you can make it in and, and look around and see what's going on. Thank you. Boom.
Is there further unfinished business to come before the meeting? If not, we'll move on to new business. The annual survey review and approval. Did everyone receive that email and yes. have the opportunity to review it? <coughs> Any comments? Lance, I'm waiting to hear from you. <laughs> Talked to Chris earlier uh, a few days ago. I think it was a fantastic job. I, I think the, uh, the method he's used to, uh, you know, denote uh, the prior year and the impact uh, comparison is, is very easy to read. And thank you, Chris. Good. Good. I agree. Perfect. Yeah. I can't really take credit for that. I just plugged it into a pre-existing template, and it did it for me. So, well done. So, so <laughs> thank, thank the, the programmers that, that did it. But, yeah. There's yeah. some rubrics on there, I think, that are worth noting, and we can use those kind of a measurement, which we do from year to year anyway. Yeah. But, for instance, one thing I was interested in is registered borrowers for our population mm -hmm. under 50 percent some things like that that i just found fascinating yeah and there's so much to that report i hope everyone had the chance yeah. to review it um do we need to act on that if there's um, no further questions the board comments? needs to approve it and then i can submit it okay i'd entertain other comments questions motion to approve thanks lance second Thank you, Kristen. Moved in the second to approve the annual survey review and approval. If there's no further comments, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Oh, thank Chris. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. All right, the technology plan is interesting. Thanks for preparing that, Chris. Do you want to? Um, yeah, just, just briefly, the the... Um, this was created originally for the, the, the ARPA grant. Uh, it was one of the requirements. And so I've just kind of updated it with, and it's mainly a way for me to kind of think about what, uh, when we need to replace things, how we're going to replace it, how we're going to pay for it. Um, and so this was just created um, with kind of rough current numbers. I, uh, computers are interesting because the price sort of goes down over time but sort of doesn't, you know, and um, the, the, so anyway, this is just some of the stuff that, that um, uh, we would, we will need and, and just trying to come up with ways to, to make sure we're on the ball with, with replacing things. Um, I, you know, yeah, the, the, the one thing that's changed since I did this is um, looking at a document management system. So basically having cloud storage. Uh, um, I, I don't think we need it. Um, we don't have enough documents that we need to keep secure um, to justify the cost because it's all subscription based and we, I don't think, need to spend the money on it. We can store stuff on on uh, um, hard drives, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, between you know OneDrive and other free things that can hold a small amount of of, of materials, I think we're we're covered that way. So I don't. That's something that that we're not going to look into. Plus, if we end up getting a a server to kind of control all the computers in the library from one central location, that would have storage on it as well, and then that could be used. Uh, uh, for centralizing uh, storage and, uh, yeah. Okay. For warehousing data. Can we talk about that? Hmm? Has there ever been uh, a reason to join forces with the city as a whole with regard to the servers and everything like that? Is that has that ever come up or been considered? It, it has. Um, there are uh, um, some concerns about um, autonomy and about having um, kind of the the, the software and, and the tools that we need um, versus what the city needs. Um, uh, privacy concerns with the public on public computers, um, and and uh, uh, yeah, I think it it. Uh, 
right now, I, I don't see an advantage to it because we have the opportunity to change things as we see fit um, uh, that we wouldn't necessarily have if we were on the city server. Um, uh, so, and, and the other idea would be if, if the circulation computers, the staff computers went onto the city server, then we'd be dealing with two complete system, two completely different systems, keeping the public stuff separate from everything. Because right now, anything that's done on the public computers is basically, it's, it's gone at the end of the day. I mean, when the, the computers are set up so that anything that anybody saved accidentally or on purpose is gone the next day. Um, uh, browser history, all that stuff is also cleared out. Um, uh, so um, there's there's a level of privacy and a level of autonomy there that that I'm hesitant to to Your muck with. Computer is on the city server. No, it's on the no, they're not right now. None of them are right now. We're all we're completely separate from the city. Um, yeah, and that's why you didn't get the financial email because we're not on that Outlook system. <laughs> so so we have to go through the web to get to Outlook. Has there been any pressure from the city to, uh, to make that move? There in was the in the past. The there was in the past. Um, Lisa's only mentioned it once. Uh, I think it's it's not a real big priority. And and I don't think there's, there isn't a real benefit that, that I can see. Um, it probably will come up again, but um, yeah. Thanks. So that's kind of where I'm at with that, yeah. All right, Chris, is this a working document? Um, yes, it is. Just kind of for you to review? And um, for, yeah, and it was mainly it just to show the board what what some of our technology needs are and the current costs of, okay. of that stuff, just for informational purposes, really. I appreciate really. you doing this. I think yeah. since we had to have it for the grant, it's great to see mm -hmm. it. Well, and we, and we also have it for future grants. Absolutely. I figured this would be good, and so this can be just updated yearly, and, and, uh, and that'll, be, that'll be fine. Wonderful. Um, Thank you. Yeah. We'll yeah. move on to policies for review. All right. Did I put them in order? Yeah. Um, social media policy, um, I have no updates to. Um, I, th there's nothing that we. I feel like we need to change. So um, uh, if the board has any concerns about that, we can definitely address those. But otherwise, I my recommendation is to leave it the way it is. Any other comments on social media policies? These are first readings? Yes. Which means we'll have another opportunity to address any Next meeting we can, yeah. The next meeting. All right, accept a motion to approve the social media policy. This I first will reading. move to approve the first reading of the social media policy. Good, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second, second it. Kelly or Kelly? Kelly's not in the minutes yet. Oh, yeah, she is. Never mind. Yep. All right, it's been moved and second to approve the first reading of the social media policy. No further comments. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. And the LCD projector, Chris, you mentioned that that was moved into another policy, so we really don't have to address that. Right. It's part of the equipment policy um, from last January, so we can just ditch it. Okay. So there you go. I just got rid of a third of your workload. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> Procedures policy. We this... made a couple changes in that. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I cleaned up a little bit of language, and there's and and I kind of showed you what I um, what I've worked on. Um, uh, in case of a fire, call the fire department nine one one and clear the building. We can get rid of at; it's not necessary. Um, uh, and then, um, in case of a health emergency, um, I'm getting rid of the Sturgis ambulance, rescue squad, police, any of that, and just call nine one one because that's. Yeah, and then same thing in case of power outage, um, call the fire department or public works. I got rid of Tom Trigg since he's not the fire chief anymore, um, and I thought it's probably not necessary to put the fire chief in there anyway. 
um, cause that's going to keep changing potentially. And if you call the fire department, you'll, you'll get where you need to. So, um, other than that, um, those are the only changes I made unless there was a formatting change and I didn't mark those, um, because they're not content related. Did we also want to keep Rick Bush in there in the parentheses or just take that out and leave the numbers as well? Yeah, the question change. is, do you want to include Rick Bush um, in case of power outages? Well, and, and, and I, I mean, we could take him out as well. Um, yeah. I was to leave him in there. The, the idea is that um, kind of if you need anything done, you call him because especially if it's after hours, you're not going to get anybody at Public Works. So that was my, my thought for keeping him Talk in. about locking the doors or being able to do things like that. It's about the right. personal number? Be. This is a personal number? That's, that's his uh, 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 city cell number. Okay. Yeah. I would make a suggestion to add the 605 in front of those. Oh, with yeah. The, that is cell yes. phone issues. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. our cells won't work without the 605 that's a great suggestion Any speaking from experience <laughs> <laughs> um you seven times i couldn't get a move yeah it's no further suggestions or comments i'd entertain a motion to uh for first reading of the emergency procedure policy uh, with oh, you have to with the changes of the 605 with the, changes. With the proposed changes second with second. proposed changes. It's been moved and second to approve the first reading of the emergency procedure policy with the approved changes. There's no further comments. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Is there further new business to come before the board? Yes. <laughs> Or is this there is. Okay. There's just one. Uh, well, well, two things. We will be moving into executive. Uh, we personnel. don't need to actually. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. There's nothing we need to deal with in in, in executive okay. session for that. So so that makes three things then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, one, um, we have uh, uh, three applications for the new position or not the new position, but the open position, uh, I think we're going we're gonna to interview two of them uh, next week, I'm hoping. Okay. Um, uh, so that's that. Um, uh, I am going, the, the next big project for me is going to uh, uh, be to create a strategic plan for the library. Um, supposedly there is one. I have not been able to find it. Okay. Um, so uh, that'll be, I imagine that'll take a little while to do, but, but I have a book. All right, good. <laughs> book do you know so, the last time um, what year the last one was done or you don't know because you can't find it julie said we had one all i can find are strategic plans from other libraries other cities that were probably going to be used as a template and as an I, as ideas so if it exists somewhere i haven't found it yet so i've, I've looked on her computer i'm still looking trying to figure out what it might what also it might be under but but i'm not sure if we have one it would be a few years old anyway so um, so that's that. Um, the third thing is um, uh, um, at the last meeting, uh, vocational rehab came and, and talked to us and, and Dean and some of you suggested that, that we look into uh, uh, pursuing a, a relationship with them as far as hiring uh, people for the library. And so I talked to um, Emily uh, just yesterday, in fact, and um, she has someone in mind. Um, who I think would be a, a good fit for some of the needs that we have as far as shelf reading and, and checking for missing books and, and even some, some uh, possibility of some computer work. Um, uh, this student is, they're allowed to work 250 hours a year. This student wouldn't start up until probably the summer. Um, everything is covered by vocational rehab, uh, salary, uh, workman's comp they cover so that we have no um, fiscal responsibilities, um, and uh, um, the, the students have a coach 
that works with them and works with us that's our main contact. Basically, they show up the first week or so, however long it takes to uh, uh, to get the, the student comfortable and uh, make sure that, that they understand what's going on and that we make sure we understand, uh, you know, if there's any, any concerns that we have. Um, and then uh, there's a little bit of paperwork on our side, um, but not much. It's a page, maybe, yeah, basically a page that we just fill out some basic information. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is, uh, um, I think it's something that, that uh, um, would be good for us to do. Uh, this particular student, uh, she said, is is uh, um, autistic, um, so uh, probably having him behind the the desk wouldn't necessarily be the best choice. But doing stuff in the shelves and 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 she said real high IQ, so she has no concerns about any of that. So I think it's something that we should uh, go ahead and go forward with, um, and I think would uh, yeah would be would be good to do. Is there any question about uh, liability? Is they take care of okay all of that. that Chris? Um, okay. We don't. Yeah, I'll I'll run it by Lisa to make sure. But um, I think this student actually worked for the city in the past. Okay. Um, so everything must be okay if they, okay. you know, if they were able to work. All right. So I think that's all. So I think that's good. Questions. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful partnership. So I will, um, yeah, I'll talk to Lisa and then I'll contact Emily and say, yeah, I think we're good to go. So that'll be, again, that'll be this summer. Um, and then I just, I just kind of as, as a, a point of clarification between you guys and myself, um, uh, if I'm doing big purchases, like I've got about oh, $1,600 worth of technology that I, I want to purchase, um, do you guys want uh, kind of a, a, a heads up on that, or do you want a list of what I'm interested in buying, or what kind of oversight do you want with that? Um, is it budgeted items, Chris? Yes, yes, all budgeted stuff. Yeah. I think it's always nice for the board to be aware of your purchases, mm -hmm. not to micromanage what you're purchasing, oh, no, but no. to inform the public and to be aware of it. Other comments? I agree with that. I think um, an estimate and intent is, is a good mm -hmm. thing to share with the board. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have like our, you know, our, our, our iPad can't be updated anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, well, we need a new one, you know, stuff like that. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway. Okay. So I will, um, yeah, I'll, I can just make a sheet and send it to everybody with, with uh, anticipated purchases, at least for like this month or whatever yeah okay I like that idea we we become your ambassadors out in the public mm -hmm. too so when we know about it we can share yeah. that information as well yeah and that that was one of the things that came up at one of those board <coughs> sessions was was you know you guys are the kind of the the best advertising for the library and you know people that we don't and can spread the word about things that uh, in a way that that we can't you know, I'm just trying to think how would we would that provide some sort of roadblock for him if there was to be something that how do we how do we handle some sort of replacement that needs to happen soon? Or is it just like a heads up like I'm ordering this? Well, here's the heads up. Yeah, like, I guess it's not really an approval, is it? It's just No, well, I, I that's I guess kind of up to you guys. Items. I was thinking, yeah, yeah I was I thinking this is just just letting you know where the money's going aside from the, I mean, you would get that in the financials anyway, but this would be, you know, here's the technology that I'm interested in buying. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I guess I'm thinking more along the lines of transparency, right? Just, I figure the more people that know what's going on, the better. <laughs> so that you kind of know the threshold of what is a big ticket item, and that's just, hey, a heads up. But right. Nothing that's. Right. Yeah. I need to buy some correction tape. Can I? <laughs> Can I have some no light thanks. out? I don't want the leaf. <laughs> <laughs> no. So yeah. So I've got like like I said, I have I have a list of sixteen hundred bucks worth of stuff for some computers that need to be updated and things, and I'll just send that out to you guys as a 
this is where the money's going. So good, thank you. Yeah. Is there further business to come before the board? Are there public comments? <laughs> I made a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. And we don't have to vote on that. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> the camera's <laughs> off, right? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Chris, I was